Hey everyone, this is Mira, and I'd like to welcome you to a new update of Hexels, version 2.5. In this exciting update video, I'll be showing you a few of the key features that we've implemented. First off, let's look at the layer window. There's a handful of new icons including adjustment layers, masking, clipping masks, and grouping. Double-click a layer to bring up the layer properties window. This window allows you to do a variety of things. We have blend modes under blending, and if we go to the general tab, we have options for making our layer tileable. This means that if we check wrapped and drag a stroke at the edge of the canvas, it will tile back around on the other side. You can have an infinite view of your tiles by ramping up the wrapping preview slider under document. Alternatively, with wrap checked, you can select the layer transform tool and scale it down and your tiling instances will be in your exported image. Per layer halftone is now an option. This means that I can have halftone applied on one layer and not the other, or I can apply different styles of halftone on different layers. Layer masks enable you to show and hide detail non-destructively. Clipping masks allow you to paint inside the contents of the layer it's applied to. Post effects are an incredibly exciting addition to the mix. We have effects like blob, curves, distortion and blur effects, and I'll be going over a select few of these later on in the video. You can use adjustment layers and document properties to create post effects. If you add an adjustment layer, whatever changes you make to it will apply only to the layers below it. Whereas, if you double-click on Document Properties and make changes here, they will apply to the document at all times. Let's shift gears to our new Transform tools. There are two types of transforms, Free Transform and Layer Transform. The Free Transform tool can be found under the Marquee Selection tool. Once you make a selection, hit this icon and now you can move, rotate and scale uniformly and non-uniformly. These transforms work within the confines of your grid and are not animatable. However, if we want animatable transforms, we can use the Layer Transform tool. This tool can be found in between your frame and zoom tools. Or you can hit T and the Layer Transform widget will appear. Unlike Free Transform, Layer Transform changes the grid according to how you rotate, scale and move. You can animate layer transforms by rolling out the properties list and hitting this key button. If I rotate the last key and play back the animation, the frames in between will be animated automatically. The same applies for scaling. Alright, post effects time! I'm going to dissect the distortion post effect and show how it was used to animate the water in this scene. I first chose a texture from the preset library and scaled it up. To help bring the water to life, I'm going to apply the distort shader. Double click a layer to bring up the layer properties window. Hit the plus button and add distort. Change the amount slider to choose how distorted the water looks and use a scale slider to change how big or how small the waves should be. The speed slider is only applicable when you have an animation so if I change the speed to an integer number of 1 and add a few timeline frames, I can play back the animation and the water will be distorted and looping seamlessly. In this demonstration, I'll be showing you how to turn the sharp isometric cube into a fun blob animation. With my cube painted, I'll open the timeline and double click on the layer to show the layer properties. Hit the plus button to show the post-processing list. Pick blob and your cube will turn into a blob. The blob slider determines how smooth your blob shape is. The inflate button grows or shrinks your blob and crisp determines the smoothness or crispiness of the silhouette. Let's add a few frames and make a change to the blob shape by creating a key cell in the middle of the blob track. If you want to change the tweening curve leading up to that frame, right-click the keyed post effects and choose the most suitable curve. Alright, let's take this a step further and animate some halftone detail. 
The combination of half tone with a blob shader creates some nice circular shapes that blend and separate from each other when we animate the opacity. So let's hit the key button next to opacity and drop the opacity halfway through the animation. There, that's better. My final detail for this animation is adding motion blur. When I add motion blur and hit play, you'll find that nothing really has changed. This is because motion blur only works when you have an animated layer transform. I'll hit the key button next to transform and animate a rotation using the layer transform at the end of the animation. Perfect, now we have motion blur. Finally, we've got some new options in the timeline setting. It's also the new home to the frame rate box. Tweening makes your animation smoother by adding in between frames when exported. Looping options change the last frame in your animation to match up with your first. I'll pick loop to first so my animation loops seamlessly. A frame with a loop overlay is added at the end of the track and the empty cells leading up to it will recalculate the values to match the values of the first frame. That is it for our Hexels 2.5 release. If you have any questions or if you'd like to show off the masterpieces you've created in Hexels, then check out our social media pages. Thank you very much.